Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. So, as I told you last time, the difference between these chapters and the previous chapters, in these chapters, we are going to study how can you analyze ET circuits. Everything we have done before, it was DC circuits. The difference between DC and EC, as I told you, in case of DC, DC, this is the current of the voltage of the source, it follows the over the time. But here in EC circuit, any current source, any voltage source is going to be sinusoidal. Okay? Sine or cosine. Uh, so, one more thing I told you last time, if, if this is the source, this is the uh, voltage source you have, it has uh, amplitude here, it has omega t, and omega here, they here, this is the frequency 2 by f, and this is the angle, okay, the field angle. So, as I told you last time, because the surface we are going to use, we call it linear circuit. Linear circuit means all the circuits are going to have the same frequency. You are not going to change the frequency, okay? So, so, but maybe when you calculate the voltage over inductor, over capacitor, or current, or anything, this amplitude will be different. It can change. Even the angle can change, but frequency does not change. All of them have the same frequency, okay? Also, I told you the way the way we will analyze EC circuits is you are going to have the circuit in fine domain. You need to convert it to complex domain, okay? And then you have to use the theorem we, 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 we already used it before in DC circuit. So now, now once you convert it to here, you have you can you can do similar to what we did in DC circuit. Everything, definitely so not all, everything is separate, but you have to do here in the complex domain, and then. After you get any current, any voltage, you are going to get them in co as complex numbers. That's why you have to convert the actual complex num number to the fine domain. Okay? I will give you more details, but this is like the big picture. Uh, the reason we do it this way because it's easier to analyze the circuit when it is in the complex domain. Last time, I made revision on the complex numbers. How can you add complex number? How can you multiply them and so on? Uh, also the different uh, forms. So uh, first of all, here I will uh, here I'm going to explain how can you convert these elements, how can you convert this circuit from the time to, to me to the complex to me. Last time I, I explained if you have a source, current or voltage, if you have a source, how can you convert this source? So here, if you have a source like this one, Vm or cosine form dt plus theta, okay, you can convert it like Vm with angle d. This is a complex number you can use, okay? So, <laughs> you can see, I removed omega, okay, just to make the calculation easier. But when you go back, when you go back from the complex domain, when you go, go back from the complex domain to the time domain, okay, you have to do two things. Number one, you have to take the real, because what is, what, what is the real component to this one? So actually, this number is actually uh, Vm cosine theta, is that okay? Plus J Vm sine theta, okay? So in order, in order to go back from, from this form here to this form, number one, you have to take, you have to take the real number, okay? So after you calculate any current, any voltage, any one in the surface, it's a complex domain, and you want to return it back to the time domain, number one, you have to take the real, okay? Number two, you have to add omega t as well. Because originally, this one originally it was supposed to have omega t. But because I just to make the calculation easier, I can just delete it. Because I already know everything is affected at omega t. So there is, there is no need to just keep using it. Okay? Just to give you an example. So, for example, you calculated the voltage across the resistor. You found it in 3 with angle 20, for example. This is a complex number. Is that okay? When you convert this one from the complex domain to the time domain, it has to be this way. There has to be three cosine omega t plus 20. You got this? Is that difficult? Yeah. Okay. One more thing. Same thing if it is voltage or current. It's the same thing. As you see, no difference. 
اوكي also last time I told you if I give you the source inside okay the source is sine not cosine it all what you have to do you you need to have it left 90 to make it cosine because because if you if you shift to cosine by 90 you will get sine okay so in any way all the sources you have they have to be in the standard form and the standard form should be cosine if it is in any other forms you have to make it is from the form of cosine. Okay, I'm not going to make it difficult in, in exams in putting anything. Either I give it in cosine or I may give it in sine. So I, if I give it in sine, just you subtract 90 to convert sine to cosine. After that, after that, you, you take this from the standard the standard form, and then you, you 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 after that you you convert it to complex numbers. Is that okay? And just use it. Okay. Now I'm going to teach because any circuit should have a force. This is not be current or voltage. This is how can you, you should convert to the source so from time domain to complex domain. Also, any circuit should have uh, inductor, inductor, inductor capacitor. So what I'm going to teach right now, how can you convert the resistor, inductor, capacitor from the time domain to the complex domain? Okay, this is it's very easy. So if you have a resistance R in the time domain, and complex domain will be the same with R. No difference, R, okay? Just a real number. It's a complex number, but it has only, only a real component, okay? That's why in the complex domain, still I can use Ohm's law in complex domain. I can say V equal IR, is that okay? Um, when V and I are complex numbers. So V here is a complex number, I is a complex number, I'm going to multiply it by R, okay? So for example, if, if this I, if you have a resistance, and the current in this resistance, again, in the complex domain, it is I M with angle, with angle theta, okay? So in this case, V, the, uh, the voltage is actually equal I R, all of this in, in the complex domain, so it should be actually it should equal to R times I M with angle theta, which is actually should equal I M R with angle theta. This is a voltage. That okay? Easy, right? So if you have a resistance, the resistance will be converted to complex, it's the same resistance. Okay? And then you can just use it. Um, one thing you can notice here, because this, this, this will not be the case in case of inductor and the capacitor, it will be different. Something you can notice here, the current here, the current here, the angle is theta, also the voltage is theta. Because the resistance, that means, that means the current and the voltage across a, a resistance have, have the same <laughs> angle. Okay, because what I did, I just multiply by R. This R is not going to change the angle. So why would we have the same angle? Okay. So that means if this angle is 20, so this also 20. Have the same. So that in other words, it's R, because I told you before, we changed the magnitude. I told you before, the standard form is actually Vm cosine omega t plus theta. We agree, omega t will be, will be the same for all, all elements in the term. What we may change, either the amplitude or, 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 or end. So it can be both of them angle. So here what happens here in case of a resistor, we don't change the angle, it's the same angle, but for sure the amplitude changes. Is that okay, guys? Because this, I mean, I'm, uh, I just want to bring this your attention because this, this will not be the key in case of inductor and also capacitor. Okay? Let's talk about now inductor. So in, in even inductor, we have we have inductance N. Okay. So here in case of inductor, so actually when you convert this one to the complex domain, actually you are gonna have here Z D L. Z actually is what we call impedance. M Impedance. So impedance is something like resistor, but we, we use it, we use the word impedance usually when it is the, 
um, in case of inductor and resistive state, inductor or collector, but it's actually it is like like a resistor. So here, this impedance actually Zl should equal to J omega L. Okay, so this is so this is like an impedance, and 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 I can still apply Ohm's law. Ohm's law here is it's B equal I times Zl. It's like 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 a resistance or impedance. We we'll call it impedance. Okay. So the impedance here is actually J omega L. <coughs> okay. For sure, this is a complex number. That's why when I multiply a complex number, it has an angle. When I multiply this angle with this angle, or sorry, with the angle of I, this will change the angle of D. Okay. But anyway, so again, I will give you more details. But for now. If you have an inductor L, all what you have to do, I am going to use the impedance. I'm going to calculate the impedance of, of L in the, in the complex domain. And this one should be J omega L. J omega L. Okay? And now I can apply also V should equal I times this impedance. Okay? You can notice something interesting here. We didn't we didn't see this of the resistance. Okay, you can see here the impedance ZL increases as frequency or omega frequency or omega the same thing as they increase. So the higher the frequency, the higher the impedance. But we did we don't have this one here in case of resistance. So in case of resistance, whatever the frequency you have, it doesn't matter. It's the same resistance. But here it's different. Here you can see we have more impedance, more impedance. Okay, uh, more, we can see more impedance uh, as we uh, as we increase the frequency. Okay, guys. Okay, now let's look about it. Uh, what about if it is capacitor? Capacitor has has C. It's the same thing. In case of a capacitor, when I convert it to the complex domain, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna make here like uh, impedance. Impedance again like resistance. So tell B equal I Z C. Similar to B equal I R, but this is for the case of a uh, capacitor. But this one should equal to one over J omega C. One over J omega C. Or if I multiply J uh, in, in uh, multiply this one by J divided by J, so same, same thing should be negative J divided by omega C. So again, if you want to use this one, it's okay, this one is okay. Okay, so now, also, you can see here, impedance Z to C, is actually decreasing as we increase the frequency. As we increase the frequency, it's gonna be, we are gonna have lower, lower, we are gonna have lower, uh, lower, lower in B. Okay? I wanna link what I did right now to what I explained to you before in case of DC. You remember in case of DC, what I told you any capacitor in DC is open circuit. Okay? You're, by the way, DC, I can consider it like frequency equal to zero in case of DC, because there is no frequency. F is equal to zero. Is that okay? So if ZC should equal one over J omega C, so if omega is zero, so this should, it should be infinity, open circuit. You know what I'm saying? So if you plug in here, omega is zero, zero in case of DC, I'm going to get infinity, open circuit. You know what I'm saying? Same thing if I go back, if I go back here to a doctor, it's the same thing here. Remember when I told you in case of DC, the inductor is short circuit, it's steady state, short circuit. Same thing here. If omega equal to zero in case of DC, okay. So actually Z here equal to zero because it's G omega L with short circuit. Okay, guys. Okay. Let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you 
conclusion here. Okay. So if you have a circuit something like that, for example, I'm going to use some numbers or, or even without numbers. The M cosine omega t plus theta. This is the torque. It can be again current or voltage, doesn't matter. And then I have here resistance R, and then I have a capacitor here C, and then I have here conductor here L. So when I convert this circuit to the complex domain, it will be like that. This one here, Gm with angle theta, R is going to stay R. C is actually becomes like an, a, a resistance, or it can be, we call it impedance, which is actually 1 over J omega C, and this one here, J omega A. This is the complex number, complex number. Even R, R can be real for complex number, okay, as well. So now you can do the calculation here. Once you do the calculation, it gives the voltage of anything, and then you need to bring it back to the pi domain. So again, just to make it very simple conclusion, when you convert that term from the time to me to the complex of any R, it's going to stay out. Any C should be 1 over G omega C, or it's the same thing if it is negative J divided by omega C. Any L should be a resistance, uh, sorry, impedance G omega L. Okay? Sometimes we call, so here we agree, Z, the impedance of L is G omega L. Okay, some things we call it omega L actually XL. So in this case, we can call ZL is actually JXL. Same thing for the capacitance, it is actually 1 over J omega C. Sometimes 1 over omega C, we call it XC. So the mean Z, ZC should equal 1, 1 over J XC or, or actually negative J XC. Okay, guys. So now I'm, I'm going to explain to you now. I did. I, I will give you this. Is, this. That's it. So how, or that is how can you convert the circuit from the time domain to the complex domain. After that, I will show you how can you analyze the circuit of the time domain. And then once you get any result, you need, you need to convert it back to the time uh, domain. Uh, but I will give you more to this now. Specifically, I, I I will convince you why. You are just telling us here if you have a resistance, this resistance, uh, sorry, if you have an inductor, so this will, if, uh, this inductor will be equal to an impedance of uh, G omega L. Why? I'm gonna tell you why. Same thing, how how we get it? I will tell you how how I how I got it this way. Same thing is a capital to be one over G omega C. Okay. Uh, I was I can tell you now quickly, but I will give you more details quickly. Remember. In case of inductor, the relation between voltage and current was differentiation. That's why we got GML, you, you will see right now in the slides. So let me go to the slides. So let's start with the first one here. We agree. We agree here. This this is a circuit in the time domain. If you have a very small circuit like this one, usually we use lower cases for time domain, V, V of G. Usually we are, we are going to use upper cases like, uh, like upper case V here for complex domain. So here I converted this small circuit from the time domain to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the complex domain. And instead of using I of G, I use upper case I. So usually we use upper cases for, uh, uh, for, for complex domain. Here, as I told you, if this is if this is V of G, V M of cosine of the of theta V, okay. So here, and we have I of G, the current here, this is the time domain, I M of cosine of the V, theta I, theta V and theta I, okay. Uh, so this is the angle for the voltage, this is the angle for the current. Okay? Now, if I convert this one to the complex domain, becomes V M of angle theta V. I M was angle theta R. Okay. Now, as I told you, um, yeah. So here, if you multiply, you know the relation between, in, in case of a resistance, the relation be, 
B is equal to I times R in typical resistance, as you see here. B is equal to I times R. Okay. So B, I can, as a complex number, is this way. Uh, I, as a complex number, is this one. You multiply it by, by R. Okay. So if you do that, as you see here, this is the final conclusion, as you see here. So this is the voltage across, uh, this is the voltage across the resistance. And this is actually, uh, you just multiply it I, I times R, okay? Uh, one more thing here you need to know is that the people, theta B and theta I is equal. Because when you multiply, if you have a complex number and you multiply it by R, this one does not, does not uh, uh, make any impact or does not change theta here. You got what I'm saying? So if you have here, if you have theta I, you multiply by R, you are ready to hit a B, which is a thing, because you just not multiply by a number, a real number. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I'm saying here the angle, the angle of the current of the watch are the same. And it's it shown here, and you see here the angle. So if the angle here is 30, the one voltage should be 30. Because all what I did, I just multiplied by a real number. You understand what I'm saying? This will be completely different in case of uh, inductor or inductors. Any question, guys? So again, just very simple. All what you have to do when you analyze a circuit, you have to multiply R by the complex number, or or you can divide. So if you are here, if you have the voltage, you can divide it by R. When you divide by R, you have to divide uh, Vm by R. It's also not going to change V. Okay. So almost in case of resistance, V and I are in the same phase. They have the same T. Okay. This is not the case now. Let for, for inductor and um, and capacitor. So let's see inductor here. In case of inductor, as you know, the relation between B and I is actually differentiation. Then B should equal N, and then you need to differentiate I, okay? So if, if I have I this way as a complex number, this is I, okay? And I differentiate it, after you differentiate it, look at this one. You are going to have J omega in here. So here, this is, this is the voltage to equal J omega in times the current. Because I differentiated it. That is why I don't you, you still you can apply Ohm's law here, V equal I R, okay, but that's not R. We're going to put it in B than Z. And Z is actually J omega in, okay? So and now I can prove to you where uh, or how, how I came, came up with J omega in. I came in with five because the relation, you know, the relation is differentiation. So I just did, I just differentiated the current, okay, to calculate the voltage. When I did that, I found I found this is the current, this is the voltage complex number equal current times something. This thing I'm gonna put it in beads. Voltage equal something times current. This something I'm gonna put it in beads, like a resistor, okay? And I found it is G on day. Okay. This is a proof. You don't need. You don't need to worry about proof. But I just, I just, uh, I, I don't. I hate to just tell you it, it, it should be here on the end, and you don't know the reason for that. Okay. But in calculation, you just any inductor. You have to. You have to convert it into impedance. This impedance G on Okay. But this is the reason that we did integration here. This way. Okay. That's why we have here. The impedance, the impedance of uh, inductor is actually G omega L. And omega L itself, we call it inductor reactance, okay, which is omega L XL. So that's why I can say the impedance is actually G XL. Again, I'm making it very easy. So you can think about this impedance like a resistance. So I can, I can, I can, uh, when I saw it as a circuit, I can consider the inductor as a resistance. Okay, it's not correct to say resistance. Like it's, it's, it's a correct term is impedance, but impedance like a resistance. Uh, it's interesting also to, to to notice this this resistance or this impedance is actually function is the frequency. Function is the frequency. You got what I'm saying? Uh, now, similar to when we did before in resistance. 
one over resistance, we we'll call it conductors. That's what we did before. One over resistance, we we'll call it conductors. Okay. Same thing I can do here. Uh, I can say when when over the when over the impedance, I'm gonna call it admittance. Instead of conductance, I'm gonna call it admittance. Uh, uh, admittance here. Okay. Anyway, you may not need to use this one, but just just I want to do it similar to what we did before. You have resistance, okay? You have one over resistance, we call it conductors. Okay. So here, finally, this is the most important thing. Finally, here, if you have V, B complex, in complex domain should equal to G omega L times R in complex domain. Now, the angle will be different. Why? Because when you want this number, this number is an angle. When you convert to the, the polar, polar form as an angle, this is different when I multiply by R. R is a new number, it's not going to change the angle. So this one actually will change the angle. That's why here it's, it's going to change it by, by 90. So here, the theta of V to equal theta of I plus 90. Okay? So, that's why if you look at this figure here, that's why you are seeing R is actually 90 behind B. Okay? So again, if you if you if you do the calculations and you find the current and the voltage across inductor and you find that angle here is not 90 90 different there is no 90 different so something wrong in your calculation okay same thing for resistance the voltage across the resistance and the current they should have the same angle if you do the calculation and you find the voltage and the current have different angles Something is wrong. That I'm saying. But here always there is here the angle of the voltage is actually equal to the angle of the current plus 90. Okay. Or we call it I is 90 behind me. Uh, for the capacitor, it's the same thing, but but here, but there is a small difference between capacitor and conductor, as you know. In case of inductor V equal L di by dt, you know this relation. In case of a capacitor, it's integration. It's not, it's not differentiation, it's the integration. V should equal one over C, integration of R. So it's exactly the same thing as I did right now. I'm gonna get, uh, this is the current, this is the current in complex domain. I'm gonna differentiate it. After I differentiate it, book, uh, and then finally I will find V equal something multiplied by i so this this thing here should be the impedance that's why again you don't need to worry about this proof i just want to tell you why why i tell you g omega l or one over g omega c where it came from it came from differentiation and integration okay but but for circuit you would just use it okay? when you analyze the circuit so actually you can see it. the voltage in the complex domain equal one over g omega c which is this one here this is the impedance for the capacitor times R, okay? And this is the final conclusion is here. B, B, uh, B, B, this is the voltage across the capacitor, should take on the current across the capacitor times, times the impedance, which is one over G on the C, okay? Same thing here, we can define something, we call it capacitor reactance, which is one over omega C, I can give you this part, we call it XC, so here, uh, the impedance is actually minus J C. okay? Here in this case here, if you see the angle, if you see the angle difference between the current and the voltage, you, can, you will find that I is 90 ahead of B, because here we, because A we integrate. So if you see here the angle, you will find, you will find theta B equals theta I minus, minus 90, not the last minus 90, okay? Okay, guys. So, just start the test. I want to tell you the conclusion now. The conclusion is here: uh, B B equal I R here. The angle I and B are in the same. I and B are in the same. It has the same angle, but in case of uh, inductor here, I is ninety behind. In other words, theta of the voltage should equal theta I plus ninety. Okay, uh, and still. B, B should equal I 
times impedance here, and the impedance is zero Michael. Okay. Here, uh, B should equal I times the impedance. The impedance is one over G over C. Okay. So again, all that you have to do, you have to convert inductors and capacitors to, to this impedance. And then you will you you will deal with this impedance like resistors. So that's why you are going to do everything with it. it's like resistors. Okay, everything we did before when you have just a bunch of resistors, the same thing. But here I'm going to use in the, in the impedance like resistors. Okay, that's, I'm going to continue this time.